of Juan, Gospel of John, <clears throat> chapter 17, and tonight we're going to deal with <clears throat> black holes. <clears throat> Actually, we're going to deal with the spiritual reality of that, but we'll look at a few facts about black holes as we, as we go. One of the things that I mentioned in our last class when I just sort of, um, we got a little sidetracked. Um, but I'd mentioned that that the black hole black holes are where uh, the laws of physics break down, according to physicists, astrophysicists, scientists, quantum physicists. <clears throat> if there was one thing that they would all like to figure out, it'd be a black hole. That's what they would really like. <clears throat> um, uh, because <clears throat> gravity is one of the things that doesn't fit into all of the norms of, of physics as far as um, <clears throat> lining up with all the laws of physics. And so a black hole really fits into that category because it's got the strongest gravity ever. <clears throat> and um, uh, a black hole, we, we've been... And if you remember how we got here on this <clears throat> subject is that we've been discussing death of sons. And we've been discussing that both spiritually and in astrophysics and how there are different manifestation of, uh, manifestations of, of the death of sons. And we've gone through <clears throat> some of those and some of the technical names. Uh, they're all neutron stars, but... You know, pulsars and uh, uh, magnetars and that sort of thing, and, and all of the different manifestations that the death of a son brings about. And we saw that the death of some sons brings about incredible light, and in fact, ongoing light, that the light is the strongest thing in the universe from the death of a son. <clears throat> and that uh, things such as pulsars, it's already dead as far as the reality of it going supernova, but it is this tightly compact um, thing that is uh, the sun that is shooting out constant beam from its poles and spinning. And it's just like a never-ending display of force and power and light <clears throat> and um, and then of course a magnetar is just a, like a huge electrical storm that is controlled as a result of that and all of this power comes from it <clears throat> but a black hole is in my opinion and you know I'll just say this is in the opinion of physicists but I'm not talking as a physicist um, in my opinion, the ultimate, it is the epitome of what the death of the sun meant to bring about. Not just bringing light to the world, not just a manifesting power, <clears throat> but uh, bringing into existence what the black hole represents. And, um, <clears throat> and the, a black hole is not just the result of the death of a son. It's either the result of two suns that are called binary suns that come into their come into each other's orbits, <clears throat> or it is the result of incredibly massive suns. So spiritually speaking, we're sort of talking about that in two different ways. Um, we're talking about the, the massive sun. Christ and his death and what he brought about through this. And we will see that what he brought about <clears throat> was uh, it had all the benefits of a quasar or a pulsar or a magnetar. It had all the benefits of that, but it was greater than that. And, uh, <clears throat> and then there's, there's, a, uh, there's this reality of a binary, um, two binary stars or a binary uh, situation where they're, they're caught in each other's gravity and they're spinning around until they become one. 
And this can be seen in light of either a person who has become a son of God who begins to do that with Christ, where oneness is starting to become so strong that they are literally melding together. And we'll get into all of the explanation of that a little more. But just to let you know, that is, that is what, uh, how a black hole is formed. And then uh, the other one would be um, the possibility of two sons, two sons of God. And when we say sons of God, girls are sons of God, guys are beloved, you know, behold, uh, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And the reason why we're called sons of God, even if you're female, is because the son is Christ. And it really is Christ. It's not us. It's not our maleness or our femaleness, thank God. It is Christ. And in union with Christ, when you've come into that reality, there is neither male nor female in the sense of um, it is Christ at work in you. It is not, it is not, well, we've come to the place where we, we recognize all saints and women can minister just like men can. It's not, it's not even on that plane. It is on a plane of there is neither male nor female because it's Christ. And that's what it literally says. Literally. Neither male nor female, but Christ is all and in all. That is not a reality of how you run your, your home. There is male and female. There is an order. There are children. There is an order. That's not a commentary on how you run your home or how the church is run or any of that kind of stuff. That is a recognition of being a son of God by Christ, which, by the way, Long after husbands are gone, long after wives are gone, and I mean no longer an existence of that, there will be sons in the image of Christ, whatever, whoever you are, however you're perceived, you will be perceived as a son of God by Christ. That's, that's your eternal identity, okay? And so... Uh, you know, somebody said, well, you know, the Bible says there won't be any marrying and giving in marriage in heaven. Right? So we go, well, I guess there ain't going to be none of that. Well, let's see. I think there is marriage in heaven because Jesus is going to be married. And all of us, in that sense, will be the bride of Christ. But we won't be female or male. We will be that which is after his kind connected to him, the weaker vessel of which he is the fullness and the strength and, and of which all of this and all of these relationships and all of this stuff God set up is only a shadow. I mean, it's either, it's either really Christ or it's just a shadow. There, you know. So you could say there's a lot of people married but they don't understand oneness with Christ and therefore they've, the marriage is on a piece of paper that they have but that's, that's their reality. But there is an eternal uh, relationship that will outlive all relationships. And it is as sons of God to the Father manifesting the Son. Manifesting the Son. Not, not being good Christians. Not... Um, not accomplishing great ministry, but that Christ lives within us in such a manner that the Father gets his Son. Not in such a manner that we are <clears throat> sinless or never mess up or um, uh, those, you, if those are all factors that eventually happens in eternity, that will only be because we've conformed to the Son completely. That will not be because you have come into some, you know, some people say, you know, they talk about the rapture and they say, well, when Jesus comes back, when we see him, we'll be changed and then we'll be perfect and we'll never mess up again. Oh, so it's just the magic moment then we're really waiting for, the magic moment. No, we are, when we see him, 
We shall be like him. That's what it said in John when it says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. It doth not yet appear, meaning it's not fully manifested what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. And every man that hath this hope in him, in him, this is... This is the full manifestation may not be there, but the hope is in him because Christ is in him. The Son is already in him. It doesn't yet manifest fully outwardly. That's what it means when it says that it doth not yet appear. That is in the Greek, it doth not yet fully manifest outwardly, but we have the hope of that reality or the assurance of that because we have the very Son himself. The, the, we have the fulfillment of it already in us. And uh, now it's just a matter of conformity. So let's just talk about this forming. Um, the, let's just take a massive son, Jesus Christ. When he died, in his death, there was a transformation from, and I'll say it, I'll say it in physics terms, astrophysics terms, and in spiritual terms, if you can listen, I'm saying the same thing. There was a massive sun, and he was in one form, but when he died, it brought about a resurrection form that was completely different than anything that had been before. It was him, but it was him with us, but it wasn't us. Y'all following me? It was him it, because of oneness. And uh, when, the, when, when the Son of God, when the Son died, he formed this, and I put it in parentheses, this union in Christ. Now, what do I mean by that? All right. I'm not just talking about a theological explanation that we're one with Jesus individually. I'm talking about this reality of this union that was formed. You can go to, you can go to American history to find that when this union was formed. And out of what that it was formed and all of the elements that went into that. This union that was formed <clears throat> and yet the picture of that union, and I'm going to have a hard time not crossing over into the next class that I'll be teaching on Galatians because I left my phone on last night and a, and a E junk email came in and it rang and woke me up and then the Holy Spirit was like sitting there and going dude you're awake let's talk let's talk about Jesus <laughs> and he started sharing all this stuff with me and so it's like very much the same thing even though we're going to be studying from two different books so I'll just see how well I can do this this, this union, oh gosh, see, no, I just realized that this goes well with the other class, but we'll say it anyway. We think this union, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. It's so cool that he, I mean, he just shared all this with me, and yet he'd already shared this black hole stuff with me. And I wasn't expecting it at all. So um, there is this reality, but it's not like joining a church. It's not like joining an organization and therefore you're one in that because in truth you're not one in that. You know, I've often described it as, um, you know, we say we're in Christ, which means we're in, we're in, you know, and the way that we draw that is we draw a circle that represents Jesus, and then we draw a little circle and we put us in there and we say we're in Christ. And so we say we're in union with Christ. But, but you can take a car and put it in the garage and it is in garage, but it is not garage. It is not garage. 
It is car. It is exactly what it was before it went in there. Right? Doesn't that make sense? That's not the truth that we're talking about here. Therefore, um, I quit years and years and years ago. I quit drawing the big circle cry. I mean, I, draw, I still draw that. And that represents Jesus. But I quit drawing us in there. And I started just saying, we're in there. You're in there. Do you... Do you see yourself in there? I remember when the Holy Spirit, and I was probably 22 years old, and I remember when the Holy Spirit started talking to me about being in Christ when he died on the cross, and therefore I died. And I remember him taking me through gyrations, because that's not an easy leap. That's a, you know, that's not, that's, that's something you have to really get hold of it from the Lord, or you're not going to get it. And so he had to keep taking me through stuff. And so one day it was like he showed me a picture of Jesus hanging on the cross. And he said, okay, there you are. You see yourself? You, there you are. You're dead. You see yourself? And so I looked at that picture that he was giving me of Jesus on the cross. And I went, no, I don't, I don't, I don't see me dead there. And he said, you're dead there. I'm telling you, you're dead. Of course you don't see yourself there. You're only supposed to see Jesus. This was after... Months and maybe a year of hard-headedness. You see what I'm saying? He's, he's, he's having to talk to me like I'm an idiot. You know why? I'm an idiot. <laughs> and and so, so he shows me Jesus dying on the cross, and he said, if you were there 2,000 years ago, what would you have seen? You'd have seen the same picture you're looking at here, Jesus dying on the cross. He says... But Paul came along later on and said, that's more than Jesus on that cross. That's not just you. and That's all of us, not just of this generation, but of all generations. We all went to that cross and died with him when he died. Amen? Amen. And so, uh, part of the reason why I quit doing that too was because there is this tendency within us to focus on the us that's in Christ instead of the Christ that we're in. Of, of us. I want to see me there. And it was like the Holy Spirit when he gave me that picture said, I'm not going to show you that you there. I'm not, you're going to have to believe. This is about believing. This is about, this happened 2,000 years ago. It's settled. Do you believe it? That's the question. You know, so I'm trying to mystically you know, put myself there. And he's saying, the word of God says you died. Where? At the cross. How is that possible? You were in Christ. And the word of God says that you were raised up with him and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, but different from a, a car in a garage, different from a car in a garage, he says, you are in there, but you are one with him so that your identity will not be seen as being in him. Your identity will be seen as Christ, meaning one with Christ. You understand what I'm saying? Not that you're Jesus again. You're not Jesus. You never will be. I know others probably will, but you'll never make it. Around here, we'll never make it. It'll always be Christ in us and us in Christ. But the us in Christ is by faith. The us in Christ did happen. And there you died, but that's where you're going to have to believe in union. Okay? And so, um, <clears throat> Jesus died to bring about this, and this circle right here can represent it. Maybe I should draw it on a little smaller scale here. This circle here can represent, if, if you will, here, this little circle is Christ in his earth form. You could call it the incarnated Christ. Okay? The incarnated Christ. Okay. So here he came, and he came to earth, and when he came, he died on the cross. 
Amen? When he died on that cross, he ceased to exist in that form that we were so familiar with from the Gospels. And he took on a new form, and again, he died on the cross. This is the death of a massive son to bring about a new form. All right, so here the, the, the son goes supernova. He dies, and, he, and what comes out of that is this black hole. And this black hole is known primarily because it is the most powerful gravity there is. And so what it starts doing is it starts gathering in suns from all around him, all around planets and everything else. It starts, it starts this, this massive swirling movement and it starts out just sort of him, a black hole, a, the, a, a manifestation of the death of a massive sun. But as it starts pulling in, look, we got some suns right here. As it starts pulling this stuff in, the visibility of this black hole, this, this sun that died, starts growing and growing because it's picking up other suns. Does that make sense? Now, did I have you turn to John 17? Okay, John 17, let's look at uh, <clears throat> verse uh, 20. Now, this is Jesus, and remember this. This is Jesus in one of his last prayers. Um, my Bible calls it his high priestly prayer. I think it's more than that. In fact, in fact, I've done a study recently that I can prove that this is not his high priestly prayer. <laughs> From the word of God. And we'll get a chance to do that someday. Um, this is his death resurrection prayer. This is, a, this is a son who knows I am about to go supernova. I am about to go into death. And in going into this death, um, I am going to get, get ready. I am going to form something that has heretofore not been in existence. So it's, so it's an important something. Here's his words. <clears throat> Verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also who shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be, what's the next word? One, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. All right. Um, just holding on to those scriptures, you see that Jesus is praying for something. All right. How many of you have ever thought about Jesus having prayer requests? Jesus has a prayer request. We're always praying to him. What about him having a prayer request? Well, he don't need anything, you know. I mean, he's the son of God, for God's sake. He don't, you know, why would he ever pray for something, you know? <clears throat> because there's something in his heart. There's something in his heart. He could have created, or, or he, could, he could, because he's God, because he is God. Heather and I were talking about this a couple of days ago. Because he's God, he has no need of anything. Right? But we were saying this, and I said, but what if, what if God, what if the Son of God, what if the Father, what if they said, you know, I would like, to just bring something about. Something, you know, I don't, 
I don't need anything. But you know, do you ever uh, want something beyond your needs? Yeah, you all do. And you probably enjoy those things that are beyond your needs as long as your needs are met. You enjoy it more than the thing for your needs <laughs> because that's beyond it. <clears throat> well, we're made in the image of God. These, are, these, I believe, come from attributes of him that had a desire in his heart. And so he says, I, neither I pray for these alone, but for them also, okay, who shall believe on me, who shall believe on me. All right. He's not praying that they will believe on him. You have to look at the wording. He's not praying for people to believe on him. He's praying for the people that will come that believe on him. Do, do you see that? That's, that's different. That's not, he's, I mean, clearly, because, and you can get it from those two scriptures that we read. Neither I pray for these alone, but for them who also shall believe on me that uh, through their word that they, may, that they all may be one. You see the progression there? The key word there is the word that. All right, and we translate the word that. When you see the word that, you think these words right here. That equals with the purpose. That, when you see the word that in the Bible, you don't just see that because you, 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 know, you can read that and get nothing out of it. But the word that is leading us to something. It is saying that there is a, this has happened, that, with the purpose, this will come about. Does that make sense? They that believe... I pray for them that they may believe, may believe and be saved. No, they already believe and are saved. Can we get amen? amen. They, are, they already believe and are saved. He's praying for them, not for that, but for that. What is that? That they all may be one. They all may be one. All right. So, um, this black hole, this, this resurrection of, a dead st of, of the death of a son, just in terms of physics, it is a massive sun, you know, just incredibly larger than our Earth sun. And we'll get into, I'll explain all of that and why, hopefully in this class. But it dies and it collapses in on itself, but it's so massive that instead of going supernova in the traditional way of blowing out, let's see, I wrote something like that down. Uh, black holes don't blow out, they gather in. It becomes this incredible force that is pulling everything it, toward it. But it is pulling everything toward it for oneness sake because everything that goes into there and everything that, that goes past the event horizon begins to come in and it begins to be compacted until it is the densest, most compact, heaviest object ever out of all the universe out of everything and not only that but it just keeps compacting and you know physicists have talked about you know everything from uh, because because you know light can't even escape a black hole and light travels at 186,000 miles per second and this this gravity this this drawing force this 
this incredible desire to make everything one grabs light and pulls it in if it's past the event horizon. And that's just crazy. You know, so if you, if you see any of these uh, science fiction movies and they're on their, they're in their spaceship, you know, and they got caught in a black hole and they get past the event horizon and they're calling back to Earth. You, you couldn't, you cannot call back to Earth. You can't call for help. You can't call for the local thing. Your sound waves will be pulled in. Everything will be pulled in. There is nothing that can escape that once you pass the event horizon. We'll talk all about that. Maybe this class, maybe not. Um, because that's very important. This event horizon is incredibly important to, to the whole thing. <clears throat> so um, so he, it, it has collapsed in, and it has formed this incredible desire, this incredible drawing that says, Father, I pray for sons to be gathered in to oneness. And all of the sons that are in that area, that are in the neighborhood. And let me tell you, you know, we'll discuss this as we go. A black hole, a black hole is so massive in its reach and in its force, it forms galaxies. The Milky Way. And I assume all the others. And what it does is everything that gets anywhere near it, it just gets caught in this orbit. And it gets caught in this drawing. And the, the suns, the suns that are close to this, the suns that are close to that death, they end up being drawn in and drawn in and drawn in and drawn in and drawn in. They're being drawn toward the, the, the lamb. They're being drawn toward the son that gave his life. They're being drawn toward this thing. For what purpose? To give them power? No, no. Uh, pulsars have powers. They're, they're dead sons, you know. And magnetars have even more power. And light, no. Not for that purpose, for one purpose, to bring sons of God into oneness with the Son. Well, I thought, you know, again, what do we call, we keep quoting 1 John 3, 1, not by my choice, but apparently it's the right scripture. Uh, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called sons. Okay, so here we, have a, here we have a picture of a black hole. Here we have a picture of the death of the sun. Let's, let's put littler sun. Let's put these other suns all around the neighborhood. I'm going to let it shine. And this thing is drawing out. Let's see. I, I can't. I don't remember which direction they go on if it's clockwise or whatever. But let's just say it's moving like this and and uh, these suns are already suns. Well, I thought the purpose was to get saved. No, no, you know what? That may be your purpose. That may be Christianity's purpose. But that is not the son's purpose for dying. Do you see it? It's not the son's purpose for dying. His purpose was, good, you're a son. Good, you're a son by me. But, you know, I wrote a statement. Where did I put it? Oh, yeah. We'll deal with that later, but I'll go ahead and say part of it right now. It's the difference between being Christ-centered and Christ. One is, it's still us, we're still separate. Now I want you to think about the concept. Jesus 
you can, you can look at a black hole and see this reality, but you're not going to really understand it until you look at the sun. Until the Holy Spirit says, okay, life on earth wasn't really the whole picture. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit saying this? He's spiritually speaking, though. He's not just talking about life on earth, you know, because we go, you know, you, you know, I remember seeing uh, some show, I can't remember what it was, and the camera is right here on the city streets, and it's showing the cars going everywhere, and, and uh, it's showing people walking on the sidewalk, and all of a sudden, the camera starts going back, and as it does, those streets just sort of disappear, and you don't see people anymore, and, you know, first you're seeing houses, and then you're seeing a city, and then you're, then you're seeing a state, and then you're seeing, you know, a country, and then it keeps drawing back, and all of a sudden, you see the planet, and then it just keeps going, and it's moving and moving, and it, phew, there goes one of the planets, and phew, there goes another the planet, and phew, Saturn, and, phew, and you're shooting backwards, and they're all passing you as you're drawing further away from the earth and you're going and going and going and going all of a sudden you're out of your solar system and then you're you're literally going through the galaxy and then all of a sudden boom you're out of the galaxy and then you're you're shooting across until you're hitting other constellations and then you're just going and going and going and, and you're looking and you cannot find that little bitty speck called earth you're going Gee whiz, we're sort of a little speck. We're just, you know, this is crazy. So the Holy Spirit comes and he says, well, you know, earth life really wasn't what it was all about. It really wasn't about who you married or didn't marry. It wasn't really about how, you know, how well your kids did. It was only did they or you come to the eternal purpose, the eternal purpose. An eternal purpose is without beginning, without end, in the sense of, I pray that they may be one. Well, that has a beginning. No, it doesn't. Even as I am one with the Father, I'm in him and he's in me, and that they would come to that eternal oneness, not just theological, church-going, joining, Oneness. That's ridiculous. It's just, it's, just, it's just insane in light of that big picture I, I drew you back until, until you come to the most powerful object in the universe, a black hole. And physicists, again, throw up their hands. Well, I can't explain that. I don't know what that is. I don't, I'm, man, what? Why? Huh? I mean, honestly, I'm not joking. Physicists are, I'm going to use a word that they don't use a lot in physics, but physicists are bum-fuzzled. They go, what the heck is that thing? They don't know. They cannot figure it out. And it defies all human earth laws of physics. Defies it. Because it is not built on the premise of, of Earth and our solar system. And we don't have anything like it in our solar system. <laughs> and if we did, we'd all be sucked up into eternal oneness, you know? <clears throat> and again, what this is doing is this is taking every, this is getting down to, you know, this isn't just suns that it's drawing in. It's sucking in every quantum particle that is in existence and it is packing them tighter and denser into oneness than anything has ever been packed before. Yes, did you have your hand up? Right. And of course, I want to talk about that event horizon, probably not this class. I, you know, I'm always hopeful to make major progress, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen because it's important that we get this part down. But
Yeah. And it's just a single point. It's so tiny. So tiny. But, but what is it? It is all of the subatomic particles that make up everything that it draws in and it compacts it so tight that, you know, you could, you could easily say whole galaxies have been swallowed up by black holes and if it has all come to a singularity, a single, a one, a oneness. Now, does anybody see the difference between unity and oneness? Unity is that we all hang out with the sun and each other. Oneness is black hole understanding. Unity is solar system understanding. We all circulate around the sun, you know. We all are floating around the sun and just, oh, you know, and... Uh, life is good. That's unity. And of course, our planets don't get along as well as you think they do. But, but oneness is black hole understanding, where you circulate around it until you are so brought into it that you lose your identity, you lose all of what you understood to be you so that Christ may be what? All and in all. Wait a minute, where's that scripture come from? Wait a minute. Are you perverting the scripture, Brother Randy? No, I'm not. If you'd like, we can look at that. It's in your Bible, Colossians chapter 3. And verse, uh, verse 11, and, oh, 11 is good enough. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. This is the reality only of a black hole, not of a smaller sun as in our galaxy. The smaller sun, and we'll, I'll explain that next class, I guess. The smaller sun, as in our galaxy, is a very small sun. Not that he's small. Our comprehension of him is so small. I mean, we think we've, we think we've accomplished great things when we're Christ-centered. And I'd rather be Christ-centered than self-centered, but there's more than Christ-centeredness. There is this oneness that he's bringing, bringing all these sons into. And, and if, you, if you look at this black hole and all these suns and all these planets and all of this that is around, if you look at um, uh, that and you can see it because you have seen this from the Lord, you see that this unknown magnetism that is drawing these sons in is his prayer. Invisible, but powerful. Incredibly powerful. And it is his prayer for these sons that they would no longer just be earth-type sons. You understand what I mean? Solar system type suns, the type of sun that we have in our solar system, which is what? Let's, let's just say it for what it is. What is wrong with the sun in our solar system? I'll tell you what's wrong with it. It can never do what a black hole is doing for several reasons, but I'll give you one real good reason now. Because the sun in our solar system has not died. Now, there are greater reasons, and, there, and it never could become a black hole, but because it's too small. Because our understanding of Christ is too small to form into that. You're going to have to look well beyond the earth. You're going to have to look well beyond the known universe, spiritually, to comprehend this. And you know what? You, know, you don't really have to look all that far 
if you know what you're looking for. But because we've kept everything in a neat little order circulating around our sun and we feel real comfortable about that because we're getting warmth and we're getting nutrients, vitamin D, and we're getting, you know, all the things that, that, that sustain human life on earth <laughs> then maybe somebody would go you know what we need to look beyond our sun we need a bigger sun <laughs> you know my god let's start let's build a bigger telescope and let's look beyond the realms of the familiar and who knows what we may discover of the lord who knows? All right. I'll keep going here <clears throat> for a little while. Um, all right. So now we've described this black hole, but there's another way that black holes are formed, and that's by two stars, a binary stars coming into union, and they die together. Okay. That can be anything from you and Christ forming into this until you have lost you know, it's, it's funny because a, the binary star thing that forms a black hole is usually a massive sun and maybe another one, but the other one is never as big as one of them is always more massive. And let's just call that Jesus, okay? And so we, we end up... Uh, sun and so things are flowing with the sun that is within you but you are caught in a rotation that is drawing you in more and more and what is it drawing you in more and more into two two things what what were you going to say death this drawing you more and more into death but it's drawing you more and more into him. Because that's exactly the, the process to make a black hole is that that massive sun and the smaller one, they are in this course and they're rotating around until that's getting tighter and tighter and tighter until there is a collision. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. That would be the destructive mind of of the world to see it like that, there comes a oneness. We would call it a collision. It's not. It is the eternal plan of God at work. Behold, the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament showeth his handiwork. And so it is this place where it is, you know, you've shined, I'm a sun. I'm a son of God by Christ. I just want to shine. And you've shined and shined and shined and shined. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Why don't we start singing, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it die. This little light of mine, I'm going supernova. This little light of mine, I'm going to collide with the sun. And in that collision, yes, it's a collision, yes, it's death, but the, the angels sing over such things. The heavens brighten to maximum brightness when that happens. And it does. It's the brightest thing ever. It's the collision of those two suns, and they, that collision causes a oneness incredible oneness but it is oneness in death yeah because that's first right because there has to be a death then a resurrection praise God you know yes maybe this is premature but uh, there is a theory held by a number of scientists that that black holes once they reach a certain point um, it's kind of like it tears a bubble 
Like we, you'd have to think way beyond three dimensional space, but like right. it tears a hole into another area that's in essence starting a new creation and all of that matter and everything is exploded into there and it begins a new creation. Right. I've actually talked to several physicists personally about about that. I, you know, I, I asked one, now what, what does a black hole look like? Is it just a big hole in time space? Which is what I assumed that it was. And they said, no, it's spherical. Okay. And his explanation was that it is just a sphere of incredible density of pulling in all of these suns and all these planets. The other is, and are you familiar with the scripture that says, when it's all over, the Lord shall roll up, what did it say, the heavens like a scroll. You ever read that? Wait a minute, because that's, a scroll is a very good picture of the way physicists describe time space out there. I mean, I'm telling you, that is how they describe it. It's like this wavy scroll that is laid out there. And, and uh, um, you know, uh, Einstein is the one who proved that you can bend space, that you bend, and, and it's called time space now. It is no longer just time and space. It is time space. And you can bend that by uh, massive bodies, that a massive body has a gravitational pull and it will literally bend space so much so that the earth is not just pulled by a mag like a big magnet, the sun a big magnet and the earth is going around it, but rather it has formed a rut in time space that is also carrying it around and around. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I don't know about everything in physics. In fact, in fact, you know, just to make sure, because I haven't said this in a while since we've been in the physics class, I am no physicist. I don't know nothing. I'm an idiot, okay? I'm not, you know, uh, it's not, besides, I'd rather be an idiot for Jesus than a genius in physics, you know? But I do see Jesus in some things. So I am not declaring one way or another as far as physicists. I'm just declaring if I think I've seen Jesus, then that's what I'm going to try to declare to you. Does that make sense? Because okay. this isn't about physics. And if you don't get certain things, because I don't, I, there's a lot about physics that I don't get. I don't get that. I mean, I, I read, I'll read something and I go, you know, my brain just goes, you know, but you know, I don't want to get it by their explanation. I want to see Jesus, and if that's not Jesus, no wonder I don't get it. It's just somebody's would be. I say that it's this, and I'm supposed to go, really? You know, I'm not impressed with that kind of stuff. I just, I'm impressed with Jesus, and I want to know Jesus. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, verse 11, uh, where there is, where, where? What, what is that? Verse 11, this is Colossians 3.11. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision. Barbe this is telling you what's not there. It's neither nor. Y'all see that in verse 11? It's not saying where there's Jews and Greeks that get along, where there's male and female that get along. These people are not getting along in verse 11. They are getting out, if you will. And in fact, they're not getting out, they're getting in. They're being caught in this black hole and they're being melded together until the particles of a sun and a planet can't be distinguished. Because it's all one singularity, which is Christ. And that's what it goes on to say. Where there is neither Greek nor Jews, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and what? In all. So that that is the answer to his prayer in John 17. Right? I mean, do you see it? That's what he prayed. That was exactly what he prayed. This black hole is the answer to his prayer in the physical universe. But it is a picture for us of the answer of his prayer. <clears throat> All right, I'm getting a thing saying 
We've only got a little bit of time. So at least let me get this, let me get this said. <coughs> we showed this uh, binary uh, suns coming together and forming a black hole. <coughs> but that, and, and what is the black hole? The black hole is an environment that draws everybody into oneness with Christ. You following what I'm saying here? Okay, let's make that practical. Let's not just make it a big old spiritual truth. Let's make it a practical reality where two suns start into this dance going into death. <clears throat> And let's say that it's two sons of God in the image of Christ. And they get tired of just shining. They get tired of, you know, because suns last a long time. Some of you are too young to understand that. Not that I'm an old codger yet, but my God, I, you know, 40 years in ministry, uh, 40 years of serving the Lord in December, you get tired of just shining. You get tired of just warming people. And, you know, it's like Peter warming himself by the fire. Well, are you warm, Peter? Yeah, I'm warm. Do you, are you a follower of the one that is in the judgment hall in there? No, I don't know the guy. When it's convenient, I know the guy. Or have you been warmed by him? Yeah. Got some good vitamin D working in you there? Yeah. Nice growth and, and health and all that kind of stuff from the sun. Oh, yeah. You talk about benefits. Benefits, benefits. I got the benefits. Yeah, baby. Woohoo! I believe in benefits. Well, that's right. But... Some sons, after a while, just go, you know what? I'm talking about it, writing about it, telling about it, doing conferences about it. I'm not seeing very much fruit. I'm not seeing any real sons coming forth. I'm seeing a lot of people warming by the fire of it. And, you just, and what if you ran into somebody else who felt the same way? And you said, man, I got a plan. And they said, what is it? Let's just die. Let's die to ourselves. Let's die to our plans. Let's die to our ministry. Let's die to all of this. Let's just give it all up, lay it on the altar, and say, Jesus, just bring forth death in all of this so that life may come forth in a greater way. Amen. All right, boom. When they die, an environment is formed that draws people in to oneness with Jesus. It's greater than any living son ever had. Some of you, some of you know this. Some of you are getting this. It's greater than, you know, I, you know, I love the sun that we have in our solar system. But I tell you what, it is nothing in power compared to the son that has died or sons that have come into agreement that say, because, okay, I'm trying to end with this real quick. I know my time's running out. Because one son's over here doing his, his pulsar thing and he's shooting out light. And this son over here is doing his magnetar thing. And he's doing his power thing and all this kind of stuff. And, and you know, everybody's going, oh, this is... This is, this is great and everything except for you're just sort of, you know, I'm, I'm going to say it like this. This isn't the truth, but it's, it, it could be. You know, you could look at that sun and go, well, you're just showing off, you know. You're just shooting out your light everywhere because, I mean, it's... I mean, they can hear the power of that light. It's, it, it is probably the original lightsaber. Wow. Yeah, and God made it. Because it is that. It just, they shoot out. Am I right or not? They, they, they shoot out of both their poles only a certain amount. And it's just powerful. And they just roll. And it has that same sound. And it's just. You know? And you're just going, oh my God, I'm just impressed with you. 
But after a while, you're going, but where's Jesus? Where's Jesus being formed? How come none of this material around here is being formed into him? And I want to go into a death that will form this, this environment called a black hole. That will start drawing stuff in and stuff will start losing its identity that Christ may be all and in all. And you go, this is worth it. This is worth it. And what if you found somebody that felt the same way and they said, it is worth it. Let's do it. Let's lay down our lives. And let's see if God doesn't form something that most sons of God cannot form. What am I talking about? An environment. Because I went to Berean and there was hundreds of us there. And when Berean fell apart, all of these sons were scattered around. Scattered all over the world. There were 11 missions around the world. And you know what? While while many of them could preach the message, they could shoot out the light, you know, shoot forth the light, and they had power in certain things. They all, all they could ever do is really do conferences or have meetings in homes as they traveled around. I'm telling you the truth, and I'm not lying to you. Berean, from which I was involved with, was a black hole. It drew people from around the world. And it drew them. It just drew them, you know. Well, you know, my death hasn't been as big, but it ain't over with yet. But it's drawn people from around the world, too. Where'd y'all come from? <laughs> you know, where'd you come from? Well, you know, it's drawn people from all sorts of places. And what is really needed, ultimately, the, the prayer of Jesus to be answered. He's praying for those sons that are out there doing the best they can. He's praying that they'll be drawn into an environment. And from that environment, because of death being the core of what it is. The core, not life, not... Victory, not death, being the core. It broke through, like Shay was saying, and formed a new creation. And it's drawn people, and the people aren't just coming to learn and see power and see light, are they? They're coming to be brought into that oneness and being right down to a subatomic level being pressed into Christ until he's all and in all. It's an incredible reality. It's an incredible reality. Well, you make that choice. I, well, I wrote, what kind of son will you be? I mean, that really is the question, isn't it? What kind of son will you be? Will you be one that can form that environment, that can bring about an environment that brings about oneness, or just a teaching center? Yes. What I see in the scripture is that it says, nor Jew circumcision, nor uncircumcision, barbarian, sacerdotarian, is that we're all sons being drawn in to that death. That's it. And that without that death, however we are sons, it's going to be about us. So since we are sons and we're being drawn into that, you know, the reality of it is we must die in order for that son to have that supernova effect. That that's it. That's it. You're getting it. That's, that's it. And it's, you know, and most ministries are satisfying with just making sons. I mean, that's good enough, but it's not good enough for Jesus. And my problem is, if it's not good enough for Jesus, it's not good enough for me. I can't be satisfied with something less than what he's praying. If I can help answer his prayer, become part of the answer to his prayer request by dying to myself and all my stuff, I'd want to do that. Does that make sense? And, you know, I'm agreeing with you. You know, it's just, I'm just excited about this. <laughs> all right, I guess it's time to quit. Father, we just thank you. Bless this class. Bless your word. Help us to see beyond our solar system in Jesus' name. Amen.